What's up guys? This is Manoj Bhattani. I welcome you all on behalf of the Edupedia world. So guys, it's a beautiful day outside and I'm sure you are having a great time. This is the fourth video presentation in which I'll be discussing with you more relevant topics relating to the chapter Capital Markets. By now we already covered our three presentations solely dedicated to the topics revolving around capital markets. So fasten up your seat belts and definitely we are about to take off with this presentation. But I'm sure that you guys are revising your concepts time and again. Perfect for that matter. That's great guys. So the first topic of the day will be rematerialization. So guys I have already briefly discussed with you as to what dematerialization and as to what rematerialization is in my last presentation. That time I briefly covered that with you. Now I will be taking it solely. So rematerialization is a process by which a client can get his electronic holdings converted back into physical certificates. So dematerialization means conversion of physical certificates into electronic holdings. While in the case of rematerialization, it's a process by which the client can get his electronic holdings converted back into the physical certificates. So what about the features? Before letting the features flow in, I can simply say that the client has to submit the rematerialization request to the depository participant with whom he has an account. Then the depository participant enters the request in the system and then it blocks the client's holding to the extent that automatically the depository participant then releases the request to NSDL and sends the request form to the issuer or I can say R&D agent then the issuer or the R&D agent prints the certificates and dispatches the same to the client and simultaneously electronically confirming the acceptance of the request to NSCL and thereafter the client's block balances are debited. That's how the process of rematerialization is actually done. Well if we'll talk about the features, the first feature will be rematerialization can be done at any point of time. That's a good thing. Second, rematerialization process is completed within 30 days. That's another great feature. And the last, the securities sent for rematerialization can not be traded. So guys, that was all relating to the topic of rematerialization. It's a process with which the client can get his electronic holdings converted into physical certificates. And here are its features that can be done at any point of time. It needs to be completed within 30 days and securities sent for rematerialization cannot be traded. Now let's move to our next concept and that is rolling settlement. This question was asked in C final examination for November 2008. So what does a rolling settlement basically mean? So guys a rolling settlement is that settlement cycle of the stock exchange where all the trades outstanding at the end of the day have to be settled. So I can simply say it that way which means that the buyer has to make the payments for securities purchased and the seller has to deliver the securities sold. It simply means that the time period within which the buyer has to make some payments for the securities purchased and the seller has to deliver the securities held by him. In India initially it was T plus 5 settlement cycle was introduced replacing the weekly settlement cycle. Initially when like you started out trading, so the kind of settlement is done usually on a weekly basis. So whatever you are purchasing or selling out today, you'll be getting the proceeds or securities whichever the case may be after a period of a week. But however having said that, that was replaced by T plus 5 day cycle, 5 working day cycle. But now since uh, more transparency and more fastness has been introduced in the system. The same is presently we have T plus 2 settlement cycle. So whatever you are trading of today in the kind of securities which you are dealing. 
So you'll be getting the proceeds or you'll be getting the securities as with the case may be within the next two working days in that case. So in India that has been like recently transformed. So in that sense we can simply say that T plus 2 settlement cycle introduced by the CV has actually enhanced the process of settlement process and that's a very quick one. So if you'll have to like take an example of this case, let's suppose uh, suppose it's November 1 that is Monday, November 2 that is Tuesday, November 3 that is Wednesday, 4 Thursday, 5 Friday, 6 Saturday, 7 Sunday and then 8th Monday. So whatever the stocks you'll be purchasing or selling out on November 1. The same should be settled on November 3. The stocks which are purchased on November 4 should be settled on November 8. That, that's because note Saturday and Sunday being holidays are again excluded for T plus 2 count. T plus 2 means T plus 2 that is only the two next working days. It has to be working days that shouldn't be the holidays. So that's how rolling settlement works. So if I'll have to talk to you regarding what's the advantage of rolling settlements, we can simply say it's the payout that is the biggest advantage in rolling settlement. Settlement of money for a sale of stocks made by investors are quicker than in case of weekly settlements. Thus, the investors get the benefit of increased liquidity. For example, in T plus 2 rolling settlement, investors would receive the payments on the second day after the sale. Early in India, the weekly settlement used to prevail. Sale proceeds of transactions done on the first trading day were available only on 12th day and on the 8th day if the trade takes place on the last day as well. So that's the basic benefit in terms of payout. The other benefit of rolling settlement is that it keeps cash and forward market separate. So that's another added advantage for the same. So that's how rolling settlement works. I guess I was able to deliver a complete clarity as to what this process of rolling settlement does actually mean. So now let's move to our next topic and that is depository participants. So guys depository participant we have been like already talking about this particular phase time and again in my uh, last presentations as well. So this question has been like particularly asked in CA final examination for November 2011. So what does basically a depository participant do? What's his kind of uh, kind of accountabilities and responsibilities? So we'll be discussing about the same in this presentation. Shares were traditionally held in a paper form that has already been discussed with you. Initially, nowadays it's been like dematerialized form and electronic form, but earlier it used to be in a paper forms. So dematerialization has completely changed this, that scenario, converting the securities from paper form into electronic form and crediting those securities into investors account with depository participants. So here comes the picture like here comes depository participant into the picture. Like any kind of bank account, securities can be kept with depository participant in a DMAT account. A depository is an organization which holds the securities of investors in electronic form through a registered depository participant. And not just this guys, a depository part participant also provides you the services relating to the transaction securities as well. So I can say that uh, a depository is pretty much similar to a bank, right? Perfect. So we'll be discussing about the kind of analogy which can be drawn as to what a bank does and was to, as to what a depository participant does in terms of securities for that matter. By now I guess you got the complete clarity as to what a depository participant is does mean and why the system was introduced just to uh, reduce the cumbersome of carrying out the procedures in paper form the depository parchment was first issued in order to ensure the electronic conversion of those paper form securities into an electronic one so that's how it does work now let's move to our next analogy topic between a bank and a depository so guys in case of a bank you hold your funds in an account. That's right. In case of a depository, you hold your securities in an account. For a bank, you transfer funds between accounts on instructions of account holder. That's right. But in case of depository, 
you transfer securities between accounts on instruction of account holder. So the only differences between the funds and the securities. In case of bank, a bank facilitates transfers without having to handle money. In case of depository, it facilitates transfer of ownership without having to handle securities. So in that sense, what's the main job for a bank? A bank facilitates safekeeping of money, whereas in case of depository, its main objective is to facilitate the safekeeping of shares. So that's how an analogy between a bank and a depository works. That's the kind of relationship both of them actually enjoys that way. So guys, I guess I was able to deliver that perfectly over there. So keep revising your topics time and again just to ensure that you get the complete clarity relating to different aspects and topics of capital market. So now let's jump on to our next topic and that is the benefits of depository system. So guys, this question was asked in CA final examination for November 2012. So the first and the foremost benefit for a depository system is it is a safe and convenient way to hold securities. Just like in case of a bank, you are here indifferent and you are actually the least bothered about your securities and their safety. So you are with the, that kind of fact, okay, that my securities are still available with the depository system, so they are safe over there. So the first and the foremost benefit is, it is safe and convenient way to hold securities. Next comes into the picture, immediate transfer of securities. So it doesn't take place much of your time if you want to transfer your securities from one account to another account, just like your bank accounts. So that is another benefit which is actually provided to the investors. That is immediate transfer of securities as and when the need arises. Plus, there is no stamp duty on any transfer of securities. That's a way greater benefit in terms of properties. Whenever you transfer your properties, since the transaction is pretty big, the government has already placed that stamp duty has to be paid while transfer of properties. But in case of securities, if you will be transferred from one depository systems account to another, there will be a charge of no stamp duty on transfer of securities at all. So that's the added advantage. Plus, there is an elimination of the risks which are associated with the physical certificates. There might be a chances that uh, uh, your physical certificates can be scrapped uh, maybe after a certain period of time. And also uh, there can be a chances of embezzlement as well. So in that cases, that's a benefit with the depository system. There is no such kind of risk of uh, which can be associated uh, the same thing with physical certificates. So all those risks have been eliminated in this form. Next, there is one reduction in paperwork which involved transfer of securities. So if you will have to talk about like elimination of the risk as well. So what is the risk with physical certificates? One, there could be a bad delivery. Second, there could be like fake securities as well. Plus there can be delays, thefts, embezzlement. So all these will be eliminated over there. In case of reduction of paperwork, so definitely paperwork used to be a very much cumbersome process earlier. There used to be a piles of paper, paper, paper and paper over there. So this has drastically reduced in depository system. Reduction in paperwork involved in transfer of securities is actually a benefit which is provided while going for an option of depository system. Plus, there is a reduction in the transaction cost as well. So earlier you used to prepare the physical certificates time and again that ensure that you used to pay huge and hefty amount of payments in order to make and prepare those certificates. So now that has drastically reduced, you just need to transfer your secretaries from one account to another account and that has ensured that there will be a reduction in the transaction cost overall. Plus, there is no such problem of odd lot. Okay, you can uh, share, like you can even transfer even just one share even one share can be sold in such case. So there is not such kind of problem in terms of like futures or options that okay, you'll have to purchase that many securities or you have to transfer only that much securities at one go or not. So there is no such problem of odd load over here. So even one share can be sold. The last comes into the picture that is nomination facility. So you can also nominate uh, while taking care of your uh, account for any in favor of any other person whom whom will be taken care of like after uh, a person goes from this world 
So a nomination facility is also provided in such a case, wherein the benefit can be reaped by the by the ancestors or uh, descendants for that matter. So that's the overall benefits of depository systems. This question was asked in CA final examination November 2012. First, it's a safe and a convenient way to hold securities. Immediate transfer of securities can be done. No stamp duty is required. Risks are almost eliminated. Reduction in paperwork is involved. Reduction in transaction cost is involved. There is no such problem of odd lot and nomination facilities actually provided. So guys, that was all about the topic relating to depository, the analogy between a bank and a depository, the kind of benefits one reap while having involved and invested in depository systems. I'll be concluding my video with a dose of motivation and that would be, if you can dream it, you can do it. So guys, Walt Disney was a person who was actually thrown out of an op office of a newspaper agency just on the sole fact that they mentioned that Walt Disney lacked imagination. We wonder today how can like how bad in the judgments would that newspaper company will be that a person like Walt Disney was thrown out of the office just on the grounds of lack of imagination. I wonder why. Walt Disney was a person who made our childhood special. He was the person who made so much cartoons with lots of imaginations down there and ensured that we had the best of our childhood, the childhood over there. So he first mentioned over there that if you can dream it, you can certainly do it. Same goes with you guys as well. If you can dream to become a charter accountant in your life or maybe anything in your life, one has to dream it. Only then he can for sure achieve that goal or dream or dream or aspirations for that matter. So one has to dream it in order to achieve it. And if you can dream it, you can surely achieve that guys. Nothing can stop you in this world. Nobody. With this, I'll say a thank you on behalf of the Edupedia world. Stay connected guys, keep interacting. We love to have your, uh, have to hear your comments and queries via our question boxes. And that will actually help us in understanding your needs better. Love you guys. Take care. Bye.